Hey everybody, in today's video I want to talk about how to take really bad lighting like this and turn it into something beautiful like this. Lighting is kind of like a Rubik's Cube. If you don't know what you're doing, it seems really really complicated. So you're tweaking, you're fiddling, and you're not making any progress. So I want to go through all the different lighting settings to kind of explain what they do so you know what you're doing when you're doing light setups. So let's get started. So here's a good starting point. I feel like generally new users to ArcViz always go with super bright lighting and the lighting's not telling an interesting story. As you can see here, this is completely overexposed. The shadows aren't really helping us much. Um, same thing with the direct lighting. It's not highlighting anything interesting. What I always do when I'm uh, kind of like helping somebody out with uh, lighting is I like to reset all the settings and try and understand what light settings they are using and improve upon them. So the first thing I always do is I go over here and I make a new scene. That way I can do a comparison between the two. So I'm gonna switch over to scene 12, okay? And what I wanna do here is go over here to the environment settings. Generally speaking, because I always strive for photorealism, I always shift to HDRI instead of the dynamic sun system. And that's just because the HDRI system just gives you such better results. Then what I do is I click here and truthfully, I just use the default HDRI. Midday two, I feel like I use this all the time because it's beautiful. It's a blue sky. It's got some details, some clouds, right? So once I do that, I go through skylight and background. Skylight is basically the amount of light that's being bounced around. So the actual skylight, right? So blue sky here bouncing around is adding some blue all around. You can see what's happening to my scene. I usually keep this around 0 0.5, 0 0.7, this is going to vary from each HDRI. Then the background. How intense is the background, right? Depending on the time of day, you know, it might be brighter or darker. To cancel out any values that you've applied to essentially reset the settings, just right click and we've got 0.5. I'm okay with this now. I'm going to start tweaking it once I actually overlay a sun. So talking about the sun here, you can see that this is a really, really low intense sun. It's actually not doing much until I crank this up. Good rule of thumb. I don't go past two. I think two is like two and beyond is way too intense. And you're getting these hot spots. You see how you're losing all these details here because it's so bright. I think 1.5, totally fine place to be. This guy, sun disc radius, a lot of people don't understand what this is. If you're at one, it makes everything super, super sharp. So let me just update this and let me fly. You see this? This doesn't really happen in the real world unless it's like super, super sunny, bright day. There's always a certain softness to shadows. So you see this, that's what this guy's doing. Five and above is a really good spot. So it'll start sharp and then it'll soften out. And I feel like that adds a nice amount of realism. Let me go back to scene 12 and make sure that's at five. So we've basically changed the HRI, right? we've changed the intensities here and the sun intensity. You could go and play with the rotation of the HRI, but what you're noticing is it's actually changing the time of day, which is good and bad. And that's basically from this direction here where you can follow the HDRI or make it custom. So what I've been doing recently is actually switching to custom. So first I find a nice location of all the clouds. So let's say I want to do something like this. I, I like how it's framing in here. My eyes going to that direction because of the bright white, right? I'll switch to custom. So now my sun is actually independent from the HDRI and Generally speaking, you want your sun to be kind of like a 30 or a 45 degree angle from behind you, right? So what that means is you want something like this. And the reason behind that is if I were to rotate and just make it like directly behind me and lower the altitude, you're not really seeing anything. It's just kind of like no shadows. It's not pointing to anything. Use your shadows to point to something. So look at that. That's casting a nice shadow. I could just lower the altitude so I'm not getting hot spots. So once I do that, once I switch to custom, then I start fine tuning all my other settings. So let me just update this so I make sure it's nice. And I'm noticing some hot spots again. It's still a little too bright. So this is where I'll go and tweak my, my intensity. So let's go like 1.2. The next thing I'll do, because it's still super bright, is check the exposure. A lot of people new to rendering often leave auto exposure on and you'll see it'll just keep making your image brighter and brighter. And it's not a good way to calibrate lighting. So always check that off if you're doing renderings. And keep this at zero and start dialing in your lighting. So I actually really like this. If zero wasn't good, 
I'm always between the range of negative 0.2 and positive 0.2. Anything beyond that, your lighting's way off and you should <laughs> readjust things. But I feel like that's a really good starting point. So I'm gonna leave it there and let's do a quick comparison. So this is how we started. Super overexposed, shadow's not doing anything interesting. And here we've switched to an HDRI. We've got the sun and the shadows pointing to the building because we're basically like following the shadows. This is being lit nicely and it looks like a much better image. And all we have to do, just as a recap, switch to HDRI, tweak some settings, tweak your sun settings, right? And then go to a custom sun position, break it from this. The caveat to that is you need to be a little bit careful with your HDRI and the sun position. So what I mean by that is if this HDRI has a sun right here, right? If this is in the view, it's going to look really weird if the sun position is elsewhere. So make sure this is out of view. So that way it doesn't get confusing. So if you don't know what I mean, let me go here. And if I were to rotate this a little bit more, you can kind of tell that the sun's coming from that way, which wouldn't make sense if the shadows are going that way. So just double check for that. But that's really it. It doesn't take long to tweak settings, but if you don't know which ones to tweak, it could be a little intimidating. If you want to take things a little bit, you know, to the next level, you could definitely play with the, uh, the color temperature of like the sky and the sun. That's what these guys are. This is going to add warmer sunlight or cooler. Uh, so you've got that as an option. Same thing with the skylight here. That's what these guys are going to do. Um, but generally speaking, you can totally leave that alone. Um, if you don't want to go too much to the right, because once it renders out, it'll be pretty blue. So right around here is totally fine. Remember my rule of thumbs, don't go beyond two here. Don't go beyond 0.2 in any direction. And try breaking the sun from the HDRI. That's going to give you much better results. Um, in general, if I were to do this with the dynamic sun system, it's just not going to look as good. You know, the results will be good, but the, the HDRI really adds a lot of detail. And that's something that um, no real-time renderer can can perfect. It's just the nature of how HDRIs work. So that's why I'm always switching to this, and I always break the sun. So I know I'm ranting about that, but I, I think it's important for you to, to know that, like, that's why I do this, because this makes it the best of both worlds. Position of the sun and beautiful position of the HDRI, because they're independent. So like I could change this and it's not changing that. So anyways, hope that made sense. Hope you enjoyed it. As usual, please leave a like or a comment and please subscribe. See you next time.